Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Colleen Downing. I'm an archivist at Dublin City University Library, and I am presenting with Joseph Murphy, uh, the Managing Director of Specialist AV, an audiovisual digitization company based in Dublin, Ireland. Together, we'll be speaking about digitizing uh, audiovisual material from the Charles J. Hahi collection and how the library is developing a technical infrastructure to manage and provide access to our research collections. Um, First of all, let me introduce you to the Dublin City University Library, uh, which is a single consolidated library service based across three locations in Dublin. The O'Reilly Library on the Glasnevin campus, the O'Cregan Library on the St. Patrick's campus, and the recently refurbished Woodlock Hall on the All Hallows uh, campus. The Charles J. Hahi collection is being preserved, catalogued and digitized in the library. And this uh, collection includes historic correspondence, writings, speeches, and uh, photographs, audio, video, and objects and artifacts, all relating to Charles J. Hahi, a Fianna Fáil politician and Taoiseach of Ireland. Uh, Hahi was active over four decades and an elected representative in Dáil Éireann in various North Dublin constituencies for 35 unbroken years, uh, in ministerial office for 14, and he was Taoiseach for seven years. Uh, providing access to this digital, dig digitized audiovisual material, uh, we've used Google Arts and Culture, an online platform uh, which provides access to digital cultural heritage. It was selected after a scoping ex exercise, recognizing it has both strengths in its usability, but also weaknesses highlighted by research by Melissa Terrace, uh, measuring bias in digitized content held within Google Arts and Culture data sets, uh, which indicated imbalance and bias in representation. Um, I'm going to play a short clip uh, from one of these digitized Hahi uh, videotapes, uh, which includes a segment from RT uh, Radio Telepi Sharon, uh, a news report and party political broadcast, including a leader's debate between Charles J. Hahi and uh, Dr. Garth Fitzgerald from uh, RT's Today Tonight program. So I'm just going to skip to this here. Um, this is after the Dorothy start of the, the videotape. Four other men are being questioned. Fine Gael security proposals continue to provoke controversy. I'm going to skip ahead to the televised leaders today, Gareth Fitzgerald and Charlie Hockey. And also uh, on this video in question, there was uh, advertisements recorded. And we want to get down that burden. And the only way you can get it down and at the same time eliminate. Before the girls arrive, just take a look at this. The new Sony C6 video. So compact, so simple. Even Noreen could use it. And even on Stuart's salary, she could afford it. You just pop a cassette in the front. And with a time switch, you can record while you're out. And of course, being a Betamax machine, you've got thousands of films to choose from. Indeed, as Garod's chairman remarked only the other night over the chocolate booth, having a Sony C6 is like owning your own cinema. Oh, which heavens have to be the girls now? Well, I suppose I just have to leave it where it is. So, um, the Hahi uh, audiovisual material uh, consists of 100 audio and videotapes, uh, which were sent off site under a uh, service a level agreement with Joe Murphy, and we received back two terabytes of MKV masters, proxies, checksums, and metadata of 66 videotapes and 26 audio tapes. Joe transferred the digital surrogates over a uh, hard drive and also uh, retained a backup on uh, LTO, uh, linear tape. My colleague Orla Connachton, who's now working in the Irish Film Institute uh, Film Archive, helps to catalogue the tapes and um, a special shout out to Kieran O'Leary, who went above and beyond to give me uh, guidance using uh, QC tools and to uh, validate uh, checksums. Issues ar uh, that arose during the digitization project included kind of speed playback issues, errors when uh, transcoding to MP4, uh, which were all rectified with re-transcoding and then uh, minor metadata issues. Uh, here's Joe to talk about uh, the digitization workflow in uh, more detail. Yes, my name is Joseph Murphy uh, from a company called Specialist AV Limited. We're based here in Dublin, in Ireland, um, and we specialize in digital archiving for a number of different clients. Um, Irish Film Institute, U2, University of Limerick, 
and a number of um, broadcasters, RTE, TG Car, and a number of other independent producers and production companies. Um, we just worked alongside Killian on the Charles Hottie collection, which was a number of uh, VHS videotapes and audio cassettes. So we just basically uh, catalogued the um, videotapes when we received them, checked all the videotapes um, for condition and so on. And we had to do a little bit of uh, baking for a couple of tapes for uh, moisture and um, sticky tape syndrome, as people might know it as. Um, but then we just proceeded to digitize the videotapes and the audio cassettes. Um, with the videotape workflow, we basically captured them as an uncompressed um, digital foil. And then we transcode to what's called a, an MKV foil. Um, and then we do a checksum, a log. Um, we then obviously store the foils to hard drive, which we delivered them to DCU. And then Killian done the QCP on the actual foils. And the same with the audio cassettes. Um, again, digitizing them to WAV foils, doing a checksum, um, and then storing on a hard drive and back to Killian. Um, we do a number, we've done a number of different projects um, with colleges, um, University of Limerick in particular. Um, and also we do a lot of digitization for the Irish Film Institute. Um, we're working on a big project at the moment or called the Margot Harkin um, Archive, which is a lot of footage from one inch, pneumatic, VHS, Digibeta, Beta SP, DV, Hi8, audio cassette, that tape. So we do a wide range of formats um, and we do all sorts of formats depending on what the client's needs are. But generally for the colleges, the IFI and so on, we always use the MKV stroke FFE1 workflow, um, which has been a big learning process for ourselves and um, with the help of uh, a gentleman called Kieran O'Leary, um, who's in the IFI or who was in the IFI. But we worked on a number of projects, uh, Ballymun Television with Kieran and a couple of the girls from the IFI, which helped us enormously with a learning curve for the whole FFE1 stroke MKV uh, workflow. Um, and we've continued that on now onto the Margot Harkin uh, project with the OFI. Um, with the Charles High um, video collection, it was, as I say, from the outset, it was mainly all VHS videos and audio cassettes. Um, we repaired a couple of broken VHS tapes, which is probably par for the course now at this stage. But um, on a general, the, the quality of the images were okay. Some better than others, depending. Some of the, some of the material was taken directly from television. Um, and others were taken directly from post-production houses. So the difference in quality was quite um, quite fast. Um, but overall, um, the project went quite well, I think, in conjunction with Killian and DCU. Um, and we completed it um, a couple of months ago, I think it was, and then Killian catalogued back in DCU. And I think it's now ready for an exhibition. Uh, thanks, Joe. Yes, so um, Atom uh, was selected as the most uh, sustainable and scalable option to uh, catalogue and manage uh, DCU research collections, um, also providing access to the diverse digitised collections, including uh, photographs, audiovisual material and born digital data. It also importantly allows um, uh, digital preservation integration capabilities with uh, Archive Matica, for example. And even though Atom is an open source application, it's actually hosted by Archivum for DCU as a software as a service, uh, joining a growing number of Atom users in Ireland where there now exists an active Irish Atom user group. Um, so these are some of the DCU library systems and software reflecting a current but iterative and devel de de developmental approach uh, to library and collection management services. And while most of the access examples here will be related to discovery integrations, Omeka will be uh, related to exhibiting and curating digital collections. Behind Atom and Omeka, we have digital storage replicated in four areas, on-premise in DCU, uh, hosted on Archivum servers, and then also backed up on four uh, different brand hard drives, uh, which we monitor by integrity checking, uh, fully expecting uh, some uh, to fail in the short to medium term. Uh, finally, we also have a copy of our, ma of our preservation master data uh, preserved in the digital repository of Ireland. And at this moment in time, we are, we're also uh, working towards a longer term trusted digital storage in the form of a Dell EMC Unity NAS, 
which sounds like something uh, from Hank Scorpio's Globex Corporation. But we've been working closely with uh, the IT and DCU uh, and as a result of kind of ongoing kind of cooperation, um, they really do recognize our specialized needs and they're supporting us with a kind of a proof of concept to establish a dedicated trusted storage. It really can't be underestimated how much work is required for the preparation, organization, and administration of materi material selected for digitization, especially audiovisual material. Having a dedicated file and folder naming conventions uh, is imperative uh, for consistency, accuracy, and efficient collections management over time. Uh, in March 2021, the Special Collections and Archives Director Directorate signed off on its first digitization policy in conjunction with our collection development policy and DCU Library's overall strategy. On the right, um, on the right of the slide is the contents of our first digitization policy and having an iterative pre periodical, uh, periodically reviewed policy massively supports our accuracy, consistency, and kind of cooperation um, in digitization work, whether on-site or off-site. Uh, lessons learned. Um, so having a detailed kind of documentation around technical metadata uh, via the brilliant media info resource, as well as vendor documentation and AV uh, RFPs like VARF, um, really don't be afraid to reach out and ask questions. And I did that very thing with Kieran O'Leary, who went above and beyond to uh, oblige me and kind of guide me on better practice in this area. And uh, really, at DCU Library, at this point in time, we wouldn't have the technical uh, capabilities to digitize uh, in-house our, our ourselves. So this is why we reached out uh, to kind of industry experts. And there is uh, such a brilliant community in Ireland and internationally that supports each other in terms of trying to avoid making the same mistakes twice. So I would say always cooperate and collaborate and document your decisions. And a special thank you to the team involved, uh, the Special Collections and Archives Directors, uh, including Liam O'Dwyer, Orla Connachton, uh, Kieran O'Leary, of course, and Joe Murphy, uh, who's been uh, brilliant uh, in, in the course of this uh, digitization project. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I'll be tuning in now for any questions. Thank you so much. Uh, there you are. In real life, Killian. Um, we have, it's time, but we, if there is a pressing question, there's time for one question. Anyone? Ah, in the back. Just a moment. Thank you, Killian. It's Randy Giacchini. Um, Killian and I are both in the European uh, Climate Action Group, so I'm taking this moment to um, go completely off topic and ask you if you want to say anything to this community about um, our work and the climate. Okay. Uh, absolutely, uh, just to check, first of all, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Did you get the question? I did indeed. Uh, hello to everyone and hello to Randy. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a really important question because um, I suppose what we've been uh, wanting to ask is uh, through, I suppose, um, the the history of digitization. It's it's always so uh, project based, where the the money and the funding is transient, and we were always con concerned about uh, the the persistent access to kind of uh, digitized content, but also uh, how it's been kind of sustainably managed over time. And it's been often, I suppose, the case when uh, people move on to a new job or they retire or they just move around. Um, servers are left with huge amounts of uh, data and, and kind of digit, digitized content. And what we're consider considering is how to um, uh, approach a kind of a, a survey of the European network with other kind of expert partners like uh, uh, NEMO and the, and the Climate Action uh, Group. And, and it's basically to find a way to uh, measure um, digital information management practices so that we can begin to understand maybe uh, like to quantify 
the the data uh, kind of bergs, you, you know, the term where rationalization is needed. And I think before we can begin to kind of think about the question, we need evidence. And, and so uh, with Randy and with the climate action community, we're beginning to think about um, not just our own kind of individual sobriety, but the digital sobriety of the whole sector and how we can kind of work together to better understand that. Okay, thank you so much, Kelly. It's an important issue for us all. I mean, everybody feels Absolutely. it. Um, and there are specific uh, conferences as well this year about, mm -hmm. I think, one in Singapore about uh, sustainability and climate. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you so much. Thank you.